Welcome to Reddit Aliens. What is the creepiest urban legend you've ever heard? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Black-eyed children ringing your doorbell and asking for something to drink while looking at you with their abyssal eyes and suddenly vanishing. In combination with the story of serial killers who felt welcome in houses because the door wasn't locked still gives me the chills. Tallybone was a story that had me messed up as a kid. An old, solitary man who lives alone and hunts for food was hungry. He cuts off a strange creature's tail and makes a stew with it. The man eats the stew. The creature wants his tail back, so he gets it back by scratching into the man's stomach to retrieve it. It's a longer story, obviously, but that's the gist. I believe people refer to them as Stick Indians. Out in the deserty areas of the USA, there are roads that go insane distances with absolutely nothing nearby. No gas stations, no homes, just barren ass land. Longest one I've been on, if I recall correctly, 76 miles between a couple towns in Oklahoma. There was legit a sign that indicated no gas or rest stops next 76 miles. Many of them are much longer. The legend is that people traveling these roads, especially at night, will see people on the side of the road a hundred or more miles from anything. They look normal, wear normal clothes, except they're nine plus feet tall when you get close to them. A lot of truckers have reported seeing them in old threads on here. I think it's an uncanny valley thing, totally normal environment with one normally insignificant detail, very out of place. Girl goes to a club with another female friend. They party through the night and she actually connects with a guy and ends up kissing him, making out. They exchange contacts, but he wants her to go to his place. He gets quite desperate and tries to convince her. Her female friend gets wind of it. Even though he seems alright, she urges they'll part ways for the time being since it's too late and they're all drunk. They leave the club and go to each other's places. The next morning, the girl doesn't feel quite well. While looking in the mirror, she also notices what looks like some form of rash or herpes around her mouth. She doesn't think much of it, but goes to the doctor anyways. The doctor isn't sure what it is exactly and suspects bacterial or viral infection. He takes a tiny sample from her skin and sends it to the lab. About a week later, the doctor calls and wants the girl to come visit him ASAP. He tells her the results are very suspicious, something only really seen from contact with corpses. They're both shocked. The girl tells the doctor about the guy she made out with at a club. After some additional research she did at home, she discovers the guy very recently got arrested on suspicion of killing a girl a couple of weeks ago. They found a dead girl's body at his home under his bed, lying there decomposing. I mean, that's a pretty good urban legend to tell your young kids when they're coming of age to start making out with strangers in public, but uh, I don't know about that one. Definitely the Goatman, as told by Anasi. The Goatman is already an urban legend, but that particular story or telling of an experience perfectly distills the horror of it. A being that infiltrates a small group seemingly effortlessly and without question, but so non-human, it only mimics speech without comprehension, like an animal that has learned the trick of speaking. It rests in the uncanny valley of creatures. The Mexican Pet A young woman from Southern California, while on a shopping trip to Tijuana, Mexico, noticed a cuddly canine squirming in the gutter. The animal was a tiny chihuahua struggling for its life, breathing heavily, shivering, barely able to move. Heartbroken, she smuggled her new pet across the border and then struggled to help it regain its strength. The puppy refused to eat any food she offered, and she talked to it, cuddled it, and finally wrapped it in a small blanket and placed it beneath the covers on her bed to sleep beside her as through the night. She kept feeling it to make sure it was okay. In the morning, the tiny pet seemed sickly. She cuddled and kissed it all morning, but noticed weeping from its eyes, so she brought it to a nearby animal clinic. Handing the weakened animal to the vet on duty, she began to describe all the things she had done to help the tiny creature. The vet immediately asked the woman where they had acquired their pet. Learning about her trip, he informed the woman that she had adopted not a chihuahua, but a rabid Mexican river rat. I copied and pasted from an online source and modified it to be the way I first remembered reading it. Well, no good deed goes unpunished. The real question is, do you think Karen kept the rat? 
We have a local urban legend that I heard of recently. A creek that runs through the south side of the country was once a hanging ground for disobedient slaves. The bodies were then cut down and let go in the creek. Children of said slaves were left in the woods to die or were drowned. It's said now that if you go down there, you hear the screams of the dead or a baby crying for its mother. Hunters, white men in particular, are scared to go down into the trek of the woods because of said spirits. My coworker told me that he was near the area once with his dogs chasing rabbits and suddenly a dense fog rolled in. He started hearing screaming and noped out of there as his dogs all turned tail and ran back to his truck. My wife grew up in St. Joseph, Michigan. On the outskirts of town was a long, creepy tunnel that ran under the highway. It was said that once you crossed the other side of the tunnel, you entered Melonhead territory. Melonheads were deformed people who would find your car beat it with clubs and drag you screaming into the dark, dense woods. Scared the shit out of her as a little girl when her older brother took her friend for a ride there. She took me once and I agree it had a very ominous feel, but by then had mostly been converted to high-end housing. Still an interesting story though. I forget its name, but basically it's a game where someone takes a bath and wash their hair chanting this thing and they can't open their eyes until they're done. If they do, then they get possessed. If you return to the bathroom, then you get hanged by your possessed friend because you're not supposed to return to the bathroom while the game is going on. There are other rules that I don't remember since I haven't talked about this urban legend for about two years, but it's one of the creepiest ones I know, since even if you kill your possessed friend, the spirit won't leave until everyone involved in the game is dead. Human Face Dogs Old Story Told by Older Relatives Rich but corrupt family would hunt down people using their dogs. When people revolted, the family ran to the mountains with their dogs. No one sees them again until several generations later, when feral dogs kept increasing in numbers so they are hunted down. A group of people go to the mountains and into an abandoned mansion where they see, well, over a hundred dogs, but they notice some of them have flat and hairless faces. This one sees the hunter and starts laughing mad and yells at them. It's like someone trying to speak a language they only learned. The hunters come back to their village and tell everyone what happened. The next day, the human-faced dog attacks some of the villagers. They reek so bad they can be noticed well before being seen. Rumors went that the rich but corrupt family started mating with their dogs, and it bore these beings who harbored hatred for the villagers who drove out their owners or parents, though a lot of them were killed. They didn't all perish. Some say they stay in the mountains to live their own lives or taking their time for revenge. In my town, there is a story about a guy, everyone who tells it swears it happened to a friend's cousin or a friend, who was driving in a rural part of the town in the middle of the night and saw a very beautiful girl hitchhiking. He picks her up with his car and starts driving towards the center of town. While they're driving, there he tries to start a conversation to get to know her. She never responds. When they reach the center of town, she looks at him and says, I would have taken you with me if only you didn't have that in the dash cabinet and leaves. He opens the dash cabinet and finds a cross his mom has left there to protect him. Between all the movies and TV shows and urban legends, I have to ask you guys, have you ever picked up a hitchhiker? I haven't. I don't know. Four comments in this thread mentioning Kuchisaki Ona but the teka teka in terms of Japanese urban legends scares the shit out of me more the first time I read about her. At least with the Kuchisaki Ona, according to some versions, if you call her average, she'll stop to consider the meaning of your words, giving you time to get away. But the teka teka chases you down upon seeing you and tries to dismember your lower body because she wants everyone to suffer the same pain she did getting her lower body dismembered from being run over by a train. F that. I made up a story to scare my son and his friends at a sleepover, and it stuck with all of them. I call it the tickler. Basically, he's a guy who used to be a clown and would hide under the bleachers and tickle people's feet with a feather. Then a fire happens at a show, and he wasn't able to get out from under the bleachers since his big clown shoes got stuck. So now he walks around people's yards and looks through the windows. If he sees your feet sticking out of the blanket, he stretches his arm out and tickles you with his feather. If you wake up and make eye contact, he breaks into your house and kidnaps you to become one of his acts at his circus. 
I know this guy who claims that he was 10, he went to Wonderland, a crappy amusement park in Amarillo, Texas, and onto the haunted house ride when it first opened. It terrified the shit out of him. One thing that stood out was a scythe swinging scarecrow with a pumpkin head. He got so scared his parents took him and left him to be there by himself while they went back to have fun. He went to bed, and his bed was right next to a window that faced his neighbor's driveway. He could see something at the end of the driveway, and he got scared and buried his face into his pillow. Then after a while looked up, and there was the same scarecrow tapping on the glass. He dived under the bed and put on his cassette player with the Hercules soundtrack. Since then, he's been terrified of scarecrows and spent his entire youth sleeping beneath his bed. That guy was me. I'm 30 now. Doubt if it was real, but I still remember it so vividly. Well, not exactly an urban legend, but there's a story where I'm from where our school is haunted by a girl. Ever since the school was built, people claimed seeing her in the theater. Long story short, my dad was a teacher at the school, and me and my friends would steal his keys and sit in the theater when it was pitch black just to get a glimpse of the girl. Well, they say be careful what you wish for, because one time, me and my other two friends went in there and turned on our flashlights on our phones. Next things, I pointed to the stage while having my camera and light on noticed my camera was trying to focus on a face, but I couldn't see one. I look up towards the stage and see a little girl with messy hair. I shine the light right on her face and could only see eyes. For some odd reason, as much light as I had on her, I could only see her eyes. I froze with fear because it stared right at me. It took off with absolute inhuman speed across the stage, and me and my friends screamed with fear. I will never forget that face, but nobody ever believes me and my friends whenever we tell the story. But I kid you not, it happened. Sadly, and coincidentally, wasn't recording. I should have been recording. Oh well, lol. <laughs>